Welcome to Ploshard Yukuba Colossa Metro Station here in beautiful Minsk, Belarus. We're going to Kamarovka Market, the biggest fresh fruit and vegetable and meat market in all of Belarus. Because it's summer, you see they've taken away the doors here. Don't need the insulation, so we walk straight out here into the main walking area under the metro and then we'll turn right. There's always some babushkas selling odds and ends. We have a dude playing guitar and we're gonna walk right down the end. So if you go back to around the middle of last century, this area was actually a flea market. So you can see the culture of this has lived on just a little bit here underneath the uh, Yukuba Colossus Square. So this rather sizable monument here is Yukub Coloss and you'll notice that this uh, metro station is named after this dude. He's a famous Belarusian writer. You'll notice though that his name is slightly different to the metro station because the metro station will be changed for grammatical reasons, Yukuba Colossa. Initially this square was called Kamaruka, which is obviously very similar to Kamarovka, but the market's named after just down the road here. And in 1956, they renamed this square or area region to be called Yukub Coloss. And then they built this incredible monument in 1972. And historically speaking, 1972 was probably about the peak of the powers of the Soviet Union, right? From there, it was just kind of like peaking, starting to struggle for economic growth, and then slowly started to crumble in a decade or two later. And from here, you can see our ultimate destination down the end here and just to the right, apart from this rather obvious Coca-Cola sign and very, very famous concert hall here. You'll also notice Tsum. This is an ultra famous department store, super Sovietsky. There's a Goom, a couple of metro stops south, right near the MACBY, uh, corner of Lenina and Praspok, there's a Vizimosti. This is Zoom, which I'll make a video of a different day. As we get to the end of this underground, you'll see this traditional cake shop, pretty standard. Uh, well worth exploring, I love these places. But for now, we're going to the camera off the market, so we need to go up these steps here. As we come out from the cellar, we're onto this street here. There's two big shopping centers, one here, and that one in the gray, or kind of gray blue, is called Silhouette. And these were built before the big Western style Galleria yeah. and Dynamo, etc. So these are kind of Sovietsky in feel, but very effective, serve the local community well. I'll quickly show you because we're almost at Kamarovka, but I'll quickly show you the inside of one of these. All right, the new hall is open. And here we go, the usual fare, sunglasses, hats, umbrellas, some jewelry. You kind of get the feeling, right? It's a bit flea market feeling, simply different from uh, Dana Mall and Galleria with their Zara's et al. But definitely you're dealing with the owner of the shop and Lots of variety, lots of hair products, and so forth. I'll maybe make a video on this if you guys are interested. Old Mirage don't make bad shawarmas. There is a bit of a problem in Belarus with uh, them using cabbage in the fig and shawarmas, and it really makes them pretty inedible, to be honest. But you got some not bad uh, beef ones here. Cafe Mirage, if you need a break on this epic five minute walk down to Kamarok Arena. What you'll see here to your right uh, is Alido. So these leaders are quite famous Belarusian food. You'll see this rather familiar, remarkable uh, windmill there. And as you walk down with these people walking, on the side here there's a whole lot of restaurants. And you turn left, there's a whole lot on the back as well. But we'll just continue on to the fruit, meat and vegetable. I'll do a bit of a U-turn here. You can see we haven't come far. It's only a couple of hundred meters. And just a couple of hundred meters to go this way. The last thing you'll see on your right is this rather sizable furniture shop. And then in the distance, there we have it, folks, the indoor area of the Kamarovka market. This massive building here was built, or well, open to the public anyway, in 1980. So we have a huge amount of meat and bread and nuts and everything kind of in there, fruit and vegetables as well. But next door we have this seasonal market. So this is kind of open uh, pretty much as long as it's above zero, it's open. So maybe mid-March into April, all the way through to maybe November. We'll start off here. Okay, you can see there's about five alleys there. There's some odds and ends on the side as well. As usual, flowers, honey, some baskets, bags, odds and ends stuff really, just some uh, chopping boards and so forth. But the main action's up here in these five uh, little laneways, if you will. 
and they're all fruit and vegetables and towards the end you kind of get some fruit dried fruit sorry dried fruit nuts uh, there's actually a fish part at the end too as you'd imagine not super big but uh, that's the outside area there's lots of other just kind of random shops around as well if you go around the periphery there you'll find another probably hundred shops just with random stuff in it pretty much anything you need if you want to stay away from the big shopping centers this can be your go oh man look at those big pile of cherries Strawberries starting to pile up. But we're still kind of early in the season for a few of these things. So for example, this is 60 rubles, right? So exchange rate's about 3.2 to 1 US. This is around kind of 18 US dollars. In the peak of the season, in a month or so's time, this will be like 10, maybe 12. It's like three or four US dollars. Same with apricots there. It's kind of like five US dollars now, but again, early in the season, later on, that'll be like a buck for a kilo. Strawberries are looking delicious, nice and shiny and rich in color. It's only uh, about three and a half US dollars. And two different varieties, of course. If you didn't know, there's two different varieties of cherries here. One is sweet, one is sour. Uh, this one here is about four or five bucks. That variety there is around, uh, it's over three dollars. You can see absolutely no shortage of supply of strawberries. Cherries as well. There's just, I don't know how many they'd sell here in a day, but it must be into the tons. Grapes there as well. Some pears. Tomato. Cucumbers and depends where you are, bell peppers or maybe even capsicums depending where you are. So all of a sudden there's heaps of watermelons. I'm not even sure where these are from. Uh, I was in Astrahan this time last year during the summer, which is a Russian city that's famous for watermelons. Alright, on the right side here, lots of nuts, man. Nuts and dried fruit ready for our consumption. Uh, let's get a sense of what's going on. So walnuts, walnuts with the shell between five and maybe seven US dollars. I'll let you guys work out what's going on here. Uh, walnuts without the shells. Like $10, $7 around these. Lots of seeds and so forth. With some dried figs. Some cashews there, some um, almonds. Pistachios. Cheaper cashews, four deaths around 12, 13 US dollars. Better quality, they're larger ones there for around uh, 16, 17 US dollars. Having lived in quite a few countries and kind of settled for different periods of time in different countries, you kind of realize some of the basics are really important. Stuff that you just take for granted. So for example here, look, the food supply is good, man. It's got everything you want. It's all here, it's all fresh, it's all good quality. And it's all very accessible as well. Now, of course, at the market here, it's wonderful. Yeah, you know, the supermarkets sometimes here leave a lot to be desired. The bigger versions can be very nice. But some of those small suburban ones, they're pretty ratty, they're pretty Soviet. But, you know, your experience here at the market here is very good. And, you know, if I wanted to live in Minsk forever, I'd be really thinking about living close to here, buying an apartment close to here. It is kind of handy because you keep a colossal. It's only one metro away from Victory Square, two away from uh, right at the heart of the city, Nezivizi, Mosti, Lenina intersection, maybe two or three kilometers, half an hour walk max, uh, two metro stops. But it's really, really cheap here. The, uh, the apartments are dirt cheap, it's not fashionable, it's not cool. The young people don't like it. We've got a guy photo bombing, there's not us or two. But it's really, really cheap. You can pick up an apartment for, you know, two room, 50 square meter for maybe 60, 70,000. We're getting to the veggie area now. It's obviously an eggplant there. Uh, some um, spring onions there. Even 50 cents uh, per kilogram. Some broccoli, of course, kartoshka. They must be really nice ones. They're 3.7. Lots of different uh, yeah, parsley and spinach and beetroot and all. Just what you'd expect. Classic. Got some garlic there as well. Some cauliflower. But these prices fluctuate wildly throughout the year. So these are agarits. These are just cucumbers. You can see there maybe 60 US cents, 70 US cents. If you go back like two months, these things were like 16 rubles. Like literally between 5 and 10x the price they are now. Celery is a good example. These are definitely imported variants. And even 10 isn't that expensive. These can get to like 16 rubles at the moment per kilo. But when the local ones come on board, the price goes down to maybe 6, 7 rubles per kilogram. So if you know anything about Russian or Belarusian food, you'll know this is dill. Man, you can put this on freaking anything. It's like the one size fits all herb. 100 grams. Only 1.5 rubles. And really good, man. I love putting this with a smantana on my palmeni. 
and uh, makes a delicious meal. Belarus is super famous for its potatoes and Belarusians are very proud of their potatoes. Look at all the variations there are. Can you imagine all the variations over here as well? Different kinds of potatoes. It's not just potatoes, folks. There are 25 variants just along here alone. This outside part is all fun and games, ladies and gentlemen, but inside is where the action really begins. Now, of course, during the winter months, outside here is absolutely empty. They do have some like little heater, what you call them, little capsule, heater capsule things for some fruit and vegetables as we're getting around zero. But as we get to zero and beneath, what happens is everyone goes inside. Right, let's enter in. I'm coming from the uh, western entrance here. Look at this, man, it's everything. So we've moved into the dairy area here. Let's just go straight for it. There's a wide variety of dairy, so you got like your basic cheeses, cottage cheeses, cementana and so forth, but uh, so you have a look there. So there must be, goodness, 50 or so cheese vendors selling a lot of variety. Around the back there, you get a lot of different variety of cheeses. Of course, you know, Belarusians, they take their cheese pretty seriously. It's a bit of a thing here. It's a very dairy kind of place, right? any dairy products, milk, etc. I take them very seriously here. Now you can see the height of this. As I said, this is built in 1980. Just when the Soviet Union was just kind of starting to crumble a little bit. And you got a lot of your kind of a quality propaganda going on. You can see a man and a woman. You'll notice a few things about them. They're built identically. The man and the woman are the same size, at the same height, uh, the same stature, the same uh, thickness of body and so forth. This is very common. Uh, in the Soviet Union as a kind of degendered society and uh, as a result Belarus is kind of degendered you don't really have gender roles you don't really have gender here so much in a meaningful way here's a coffee shop other kind of dried fruits or canned fruits at least some grains and so forth this place up here is like a nut specialty kind of place uh, again really cheap I mean these cashews are like $11 for a kilogram see uh, the hazelnuts or macadamia, I don't know, one or the other. Almonds, 12, like pecans, pistachios. What does happen is as you spend more and more time not speaking English, you forget a lot of basic words, especially basic nouns, such as nuts. Look at those walnuts there, my goodness, they're $8 for a kilogram. And up the top here, you've got another round of just other shops. You can see they're obviously Indian. This one's uh, Asia product if you can't read it and all the way around the top there's this extra level of shops as well this is like a price list of different cuts you can see the average price is probably around 15 rubles for like a lower quality and then kind of 25 even up to 35 uh, rubles uh, depending season as well I've also paid 45 for the best cut but it's still only kind of 13 14 US for the absolute best cut See down here, obviously steak. It's kind of nice cut here. Now you could mistake this for a heart attack waiting to happen. Heart attacks per kilo. This is very, very popular here. They put a lot of seasoning on. You can't quite see the seasoning so much. It's literally pure fat. I forget the name of it. Tell me in the comments. But uh, this is like a Belarusian staple. Out of all the meat sections, the most popular is the preserved meat. Lots of uh, kolbasa. Lots of sausages and the like. Uh, lots of hams. This is definitely the most popular. Probably just from tradition more than anything else. Uh, around here we have poultry. You can see here some uh, chickens and uh, looks like rabbits to me as well. Some pre-packed chicken pieces. Here you got filet as they call it, chicken breast for us. Around 12 rubles a kilo. Like drumsticks there, legs around 7 rubles. Kilo. Man, the prices have gone up. I remember when I first came here, well, it was 12, it was actually about 7. It's only two and a half years ago. They're only 7 rubles. So I think globally, chicken and eggs have just gone up heaps. Little bits of salmon here. See the salmon, that would be probably fresh, obviously pricey for that reason. If you get frozen salmon, it's actually quite cheap here, reasonably cheap. You know, there's a lot of caviar and kind of other variants here as well. So it is available. Um, but of course it's not uh, caught here. I dare say it would come from Russia. All right, when we're looking at eggs, you can look at the codes here. So what you'll see is there's always a letter D and a number null. So this means they're the biggest and then the freshest, essentially. 
Uh, one means they're a bit older. Uh, I think at least one week or maybe 10 days. So these have been laid in the last, I think, one week. Um, as you go down here, uh, D1, for example, these are older. So one means they're older than a week, older than 10 days. And if they're C instead of D, it means they're a bit smaller. So D relates to the size. So I always get D null, and my lady here is setting me up with Sorok pieces. So that'll cost around, uh, for 40 eggs, this will cost me around, the mass 14. So around $4 US, $4.20 US for 40 eggs. And as I say, my lady's there getting me the best. My motivation to come to the market is just the experience and then the quality. So it's probably like 60% experience, 40% quality. But in reality, it's also a lot cheaper. Like, okay, I've got D-Noll there. I can't get D-Noll from the supermarket. Like, they don't have it. The processes are too long, the eggs get old, and you can't get the freshest eggs. But here, it was 3.30 for D1. In the supermarket, it's like 4.30. So it's a good, uh, almost 30% more expensive uh, in the supermarkets. I don't think most things are that different in price, but it certainly is a little bit cheaper here. And what you'll notice as well, uh, especially on pension day, You'll notice that one or two of the, the sellers for each product category will drop their price a bit lower than everyone else. And then all the oldies line up like crazy. You might see, for example, there, I would have paid $350 for the D -O, D -Nolls. Um, that One place might put it for $335, and you'll have like 40 or 50 pensioners lined up to get it. Lots of different variants of honey too. So the, uh, some of this is from buckwheat, some from other grains, and they actually sell uh, the honeycomb itself. Check that out. I mentioned cheese and dairy already being a bit of a thing here in Belarus. So is black bread, man. The black bread here is friggin' delicious. And we're down the last aisle here in the market to hunt some down. And you get quite a few different variants. It's up to you which one you want. Uh, a buddy of mine loves this one from Mogulov. He showed me this particular loaf. It's like 60 cents. It must be a kilogram. And it's just bloody delicious. You can eat it on its own. Here, there's quite a few variants. This has got seeds inside as well. These are from different places, different bakeries. So this bad boy here is like, yeah, four rubles. There you go, that's from Mogulov. That's what my buddy loves. Local guy. Cakes are also super famous here in Belarus. Absolutely the kusna. You can see here, it's like, yeah, five bucks for a cake. Not even. I'm not sure what's happened though. There used to be a lot more here. There used to be. 20 or so sellers now there's only about three i'm not sure if it's a seasonal thing maybe i really don't know people don't eat comfort food as much in the summer but it's kind of weird to see such a few cake sellers here there's a money changer here you can see the spreads are tight um that's only uh well from the midpoint just over half a percent uh you're losing from the midpoint of 319 there for one dollar it's pretty crazy and some other banks are even tighter paratech bank is it'd be like 0.3 of a percent spread only problem is if dollars are always available or not. That's the kind of question mark. But at the moment they are. And as you can see, you don't want to be bringing in rubles from outside. You can get them here super cheap, bring in US dollars. Uh, really competitive spreads. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to say goodbye to you now. I'm going to go do my shopping. I've just bought some eggs, as you saw. That's all I've purchased so far. So let's get some fruit, vegetables, meat, and so forth. Uh, enjoy the walk around. I really enjoy the vibe here. It's got that kind of... Uh, old-fashioned traditional feel you know it's not that kind of glitzy uh, large Western mall it's just a lot of fun I really enjoy the experience I'm gonna wander around here for now uh, enjoy the view as I say goodbye I'll give you a bit of a pan shot here this is the main entrance from the street so you can see pretty busy lots of stuff now these ones are empty but during the winter they fill up with fruit and vegetables so lots of variety lots of vibe nice and comfortable shopping